As Todd said, my name is Felipe Madsen. I work at the National Rare Astronomy Observatory as a software engineer, a PhD in astrophysics. Um, and I'm going to talk how about, uh, about how we've been using multiple GPUs on path to do uh, to make our images, uh, basically from the VLA. This talk is all about make, making images with the VLA. This is my abstract just for completeness. I will not read it for you. Uh, it's on the website. Um, and quickly, the outline of my talk. Um, so I'll be talking about the what's current, what's the future for interferometry, then explain a, very quickly how I make images. And I, more on that later. Uh, the development of um, our process for uh, compatible with HD Condor and how high throughput computing, and then uh, get into testing on path with multiple GPUs and talk a, about and show some measurements, uh, a tool that we developed to, sh to see how, how well our runs are, are going on time and talk about our challenges and what we have for the future. So this is what we currently operate. So the very large array that you just saw a picture of and there's another one, so the very large arrays here. Uh, then Alma is, uh, we operate along with international partners and the uh, very long baseline array is uh, uh, 10, 10 antennas uh, uh, distributed over the country, including uh, you know, Hawaii and Caribbean to have very, very high uh, resolution. And for the future, we are, we are planning to combine all this in one uh, kind of a combination of all this in the, what we call the NGVLA. The, uh, for a comparison, the VLA is 30 antennas, the 27 antennas, sorry, the ALMA is 65 antennas, and the NGVLA is gonna be 260 antennas, give or take. So it's larger than the VLA, than ALMA by orders of magnitude in different uh, aspects, not only number of antennas. And we're expecting to have really much better images out of this. Uh, well, Greg's talk was uh, all counter commands in 30 minutes. This is, uh, I'll try to, to explain interferometer circuit imaging in 30 seconds. And I have no hope of being able to do it. I love to talk about it. So if you want to talk about it, find me on the break. And if you're curious, I can explain this a lot more. In fact, I was talking to my colleagues yesterday for like two hours about this. So, okay. Uh, but basically, uh, take the ex example of the VLA. This is uh, the antenna positions of the VLA. Uh, this is the north arm, west, and east arm. From the antenna positions, we derive a sampling function by computing the distance between each between every two antennas and the orientation of that pair of antennas. So the northwest orientation and the distance. This will be for each pair of antennas, there is a point in this plot here. So each pair of antennas, a point here, and we have this sampling function. Well, this is irregular and incomplete, not as incomplete as, uh, for example, we saw a, plot, a similar plot to this, the UV coverage of the uh, Event Horizon Telescope early in, earlier in the week. Well, their, uh, their coverage is a lot more incomplete, but it's still incomplete and irregular. And we have to regularize this by resampling uh, the data that we measure with, through this sampling function in the process we call grading. And then we take the FFT, uh, the inverse FFT of our measurements, and we end up with something like this. That is the dirty image. We call it the dirty image. And it's whatever is in the sky convolved with our sampling function. And we need to get rid of the sampling function uh, and to, to end up with an image. And that's a lot of post crosses. And that process that's called grading. Uh, this is an iterative process where we revisit the grading in every iteration, and this is very important uh, for what I'll, I'll talk now, because I'll, now, uh, what is the size of this computing? 
So um, when I started back in 2003 to make images with interferometers, I could process all my solar data from GMRT, a uh, telescope in India that's very similar to the VLA. So I have two days of solar data at high resolution, and I could process all my solar data in one day on my Pentium 4 laptop. Well, those were good times because, well, first thing, the greeting that I met, oh, sorry. What happened? Oh. So first thing, the greeting that I mentioned is like 90% of our computing cost. Approximately. Uh, and our data rate with the VLA is 25 megabytes per second. And for G NGVLA, we're estimating it something like eight, eight gigabytes per second. Well, we, we already have, we already face challenges at this data rate. So uh, we have two examples here uh, that I am that I'm using in my tests on path. So uh, we have deep field observations with nine terabytes of input data on 102 files. And we don't usually talk about our images in, in terms of megapixels, but this is uh, something that everyone is used to now. So I calculated how, how big are our images in megapixels. And for this uh, particular observation, there are 84 megapixels. And for our sky survey, that's a project to image the, the entire, uh, the visible sky to the VLA. It's over 30,000 square degree images. And each image is 268 megapixels. Uh, and so for the NGVLA, uh, things get a lot bigger. Uh, the estimated size of computing is like 50 petaflops per second, which uh, would result in a, a million wave parallelization with uh, CPU cores running 24 by seven. And we estimate that with GPUs, we can reduce that to a thousand wave parallelization. And that's to make one image. Okay. So we needed a high throughput, uh, you know, a model compatible with uh, HD Condor high throughput computing to be able to go and, you know, get whatever cycles we can from anyone who, who has cycles to give us to be able to process this. Uh, and what we do, so I, uh, we developed this uh, model for um, distributing our data processing, our imaging process, uh, where we partition the data first. This is derived from our parallel implementation of Ticlin. That Ticlin is the task in our software CASPA that makes images the main test that makes images. And this is derived from this parallel implementation that currently op runs on OpenMP and PI uh, on a connected cluster. So, and so here I partition, I make partitions of the data first and distribute the data to uh, as many processes as I can. And so uh, this uh, red, white, red, pink uh, blocks here, modules here, are where I distribute data. So these are where, where uh, I'm taking advantage of um, an HTC model. And these are the graders that are those uh, hungry beasts for, for processing. Uh, and then I have to put everything back together in a serial step, which is part of our uh, imaging cycle, and then scatter again to, to uh, keep going with the process. Um, so, well, because I'm very good at naming, uh, just like, you know, Greg used to talk about, you know, Condor, uh, I named it HD Clean, which I think it's self-explanatory. Uh, it breaks down these image processing. On the, on the, in the process of breaking it down, it also addresses an asymmetry here because when we parallelize this, it's, uh, we use a lot of, uh, this uh, has, uses a lot of flops and has a large memory footprint. And this doesn't use so much uh, flops and has uh, a much smaller memory footprint. And so this needs much, uh, a, a much smaller uh, computer. This is addressed when we break this into modules. Uh, I implement the iteration here using retry and uh, postscript. This is a sub DAG. This is another sub DAG. 
Um, and we can partition the input data along various axes. We're currently doing time and frequency. We plan to do more, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in my next slide. Okay, so what did we need uh, in order to be able to test on path? Uh, we needed to a fully relocatable GPU grader. Uh, we needed to make tarballs of image products because our images are directories. We needed to improve the mapping of intermediate products. Uh, and we needed, we also needed unique names, which is related to the mapping because using stash and caches, we cannot reuse names as we do in our uh, process that takes advantage of shared uh, storage. Um, so our goals on this project is to measure the runtime scaling of our GPU grader that I'll show in a bit, to measure the runtime scaling of our uh, distributed processing, and to prototype NGVLA scale data processing. Well, so this shows how a grader uh, scales as a function of the number of the partitions of the input um, file. So I have uh, two different input sizes here, 99 gigabytes and 198 gigabytes. And they correspond to these two uh, parallel lines here. The solid lines are linear uh, estimates and the data is carried here. Uh, so they follow very well the linear, uh, the linear calculations. Uh, to the side here is just as a function of partition size instead of number of partitions. So I combine all the data in just one plot. And even zooming in, we don't see a lot of deviation from a linear uh, prediction. So they scale pretty linearly, pretty well, uh, down from like five gigabytes to up to 200 gigabytes. That part uh, is fine and shows that what we know that, that the grading is uh, highly parallelizable. But we wanted to know how this was, uh, how these processes were distributed in time, how concurrent we could run these processes, because remember, we also have a serial barrier. So we came up with the visualization that we call concurrency plot that will show how our processes are distributed in time. And uh, well, this shows, uh, this, also, this shows each process, how much processes are running concurrently, where are the serial processes, so where are the barriers, idle time, um, you know, and we have a, this is a view of the entire, of an entire process. But we can also look into detail and, you know, see what is transfer time? What is job running, but not our application running yet? How long our application is running? In the case of the greater processes, what is the grading time? You know, then again, how concurrent, how many, how many, uh, uh, machines, how many slots are running our jobs at the same time? Uh, and so we clearly see the, the serial barriers here. And I will talk a lot more about this in my next uh, five ish minutes. So this is now, so now uh, plotting the job all time as a function of the number of partitions for the 198 gigabytes data set. Remember this, uh, uh, and, and then this is referring to that data set I, I spoke about in the beginning, that is that the images are 84 megapixels. So this is for our 198 input, uh, gigabyte input data. And this is comparing the time, the job all time for uh, the, the residual cycle, which is the, the greater process basically, and our serial, one of our serial barriers that's the gather. And so at 32 partitions, they take the same time. So I have a serial process, a serial barrier, and that this is not the entire barrier, this is just the first process in the serial part. This takes the same time as all the graders. Well, but this gets worse. Considering the same partition, so I crafted, I took the, sa the same uh, input data set and I crafted a data set that was 99 gigabytes larger. So I basically I kept the same partition size here and copied another eight partitions and 
and ran with that. They are not expecting to have good images because I'm faking data, but just to have, just to keep this size of data partition and increase the number of partitions. And when I do that and then combine all the images, um, the, my, the gather time is here. So same, uh, same uh, job all time for residual cycle here and the gather time is here. So this point is not here because I'm bad at, uh, you know, uh, because I have bad presentation skills. It's just because I wanted the plot, the, the point to be out of the plot because it's from a slightly different data set. So why does this happen? Because each partition will make a full size image. So we have, so this grows linearly with the number of data partitions. And we, now we have this, in this case, 32, then 48. And we have, remember, we, we have to go to a, a thousand way parallelization. So that will mean a thousand partitions. And we are having problem at uh, 48. This, this keeps growing. So a thousand partitions, this will, this will almost make our images impossible. <laughs> um, and, and most of this job's wall time is transfer in and out and tar on tar. Remember, direct, our images are directories. And to transfer them, we have, we need to transfer it, we need files. So for our sky survey, well, this is a, an example of um, imaging to convergence. So we ran, I ran many cycles here. So four cycles, four imaging cycles here, the, that iterative process. And this is a well-behaved run. We didn't see any much of idle time or anything. Thank you. Um, and so this is just an example of you know, how, uh, how a well-behaved run would look like in the ideal world. But Going, going back to that barrier, to that serial barrier, we, the, there is the, here is uh, two, two different runs with our VLAS data, data from our sky survey, that's showing uh, the, the imaging cycle for uh, two partitions, two data partitions and four data partitions. The, these imaging cycles are comparable in, in duration. Here, the residual cycle took this much and the gather, so 4, 426 and the gather takes 188 seconds. Then for four partitions, 393, as expected, it decreases, but then the gather takes 238 seconds. So this is already showing that the same effect that I was, but this is at four data partitions. So a lot sooner. Um, so what do we have for the future? Uh, we want to improve the efficiency, the IO efficiency of our grading jobs. We want to get more job done uh, with the same compute, with the same. Uh, so we want to for ex further expand the data partition to, to other axes. So I, 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 and, I and in the, my, my, my slide about that, I say what other axes we are interested in expanding the data partition to. Uh, then we'll integrate a new model uh, a new module for the, to run the model cycle, but that's topic for another talk. Uh, and this, for, but the, this gather barrier is right now is what we need to uh, to address in order to be able to scale up. So we will optimize our deck design to minimize this barrier. We already have good ideas on how to do that, but we're also investigating scalable design solutions. So if you ever, so if any of you has uh, a problem similar to this, please talk to me. <laughs> and once we have all that, we'll scale up to the our residual cycle partitioning to distribute by uh, you know by at least two orders of magnitude, uh, one to two orders of magnitude. And for that, we will need a larger number of available GPUs or a hybrid distribution model that does the grading on CPU and GPU. And that's 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 all. 